Good evening from Serendipity Forge. Just did a nice little quick video today. Um, needed a tool, made a tool. And this is what I made. This is an awl I use for my leather work. Um, been needing one of these for a while. It's better than using the ice pick my wife has in the drawer. Apparently it came from her grandparents and it's ancient and um, if I keep using that for my leather work, I'm probably putting my life at risk. So, need a tool, make a tool. And that's what our project is for today. Watch the video. I uh, hope you learned something. If not, just hope you enjoy. Be sure and like and subscribe. If you do, um, leave us a comment in the comment section if you have an idea for future content. Be or wait, if you just want to say hello, be quite happy to hear from you. Hope everybody has a blessed night. Catch you next time. All right, we got to get some starting stock together. And let's see, this is a garage door spring, a broken garage door spring. It's about quarter inch diameter, but it's good high carbon steel. So the first thing we got to do is straighten it out. I don't need much of this, but I'm sure I'll straighten out more than I need anyway. Eh, why not? Seem to be struggling a little bit with those tongs. Ordinarily, I'd just drop the coil over the horn of the anvil and pull it all off straight while it's hot, but Eh, that had been too much trouble to move the camera around. So, I'll fiddle around here and struggle a little bit. We'll get it done eventually. That looks pretty good. I need to get the hardy cutter out. Yep, so I can uh, turn it the other way. There you go. So I can knock a piece of that off. There we go. Never want to cut over or cut anything all the way through on a party cutter. Don't want to hit your blade with your hammerhead. Put it up and warm it back up. And the first thing to do is just work it out straight. This spring is about 5160 high carbon. And since it is, I certainly don't want to work it too cold. And it is cool out this morning, and this is the first thing I've forged today, so the anvil's still cold. And it's sucking the heat right out of it. Got to get that in straight. Now. Start drawing a point. Now for an awl for piercing leather, I need a long, smooth, tapered point. The first thing to do is make a short point. Now I can come back and start working it out longer. Working on the flat, working all four sides, keeping it square. Got to get that taper long enough. Then work the, work the, corners down so we go from square to octagon
but right now still drawing a taper. That's yeah, looking pretty good. No cracks, no twists, no nothing. I believe it's gonna work out fine. Gotta be careful. Now we'll knock the corners down. And with a smaller hammer, just start rounding it out. I absolutely hate grinding, so when I'm forging something, I try to forge it as close to finish as possible. And when I get done with this, it'll be almost completely round. Make sure everything's straight. Neat. Yeah, pretty good. Now to polish it, I need to polish the end, so I'm just gonna chuck it up in the cordless drill and take it to the belt sander. Uh, with it in the drill, you can just run it on the sanding belt and get it polished. Now I need a handle, and since I don't make fancy tools for myself, the easiest, quickest handle is just bend the loop on this end. Yep. That's gonna do great. I can stick a finger through that loop and have a good secure hold. I can punch a hole and then let the awl hang on a finger while I use the other four fingers to pull the thread. Now we're annealing. Bright orange. And let it air cool to black. And back in the fire. bright red and let it air cool to black now we're going to go back to just red, just past, magne just past magnetic. And I have a quench tub off camera and the oil in it's warming. So this is gonna be our final normalize. And when she cools back to black, I'll heat it up to non-magnetic to the critical temperature, let it soak for just a second, and then quench it. And there it's quenched. 
Now that tapered end is hard as woodpecker lips and very brittle. So we've got to temper it back. I took it back to the belt sander, ran it on a very fine belt and just polished it. So what I'm gonna do now is use the torch to temper it back. If you watch, you can see the colors start to run up from the temper. And what I want is I want that tip to be just a straw yellow at the tip. And this is the way temper used to be done with everything. It was either done over an open flame or temper was done on a block of hot steel. It's the tra traditional way. The little plastic tub's got water in it. And when I get the tip to the right temperature, I'll quench it in the water to stop the tempering process. Yep, that looks good. Now that'll be nice and hard, but not so brittle it's gonna break off. And I'll take it and do the final sharpening on the belt sander and put it to use. Yep, just fine. Tool ready to go.